Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Day of the Word. Today is Tuesday, February 22nd. So you could join me for a few minutes together. It is a rainy day out there. I can hear it um, banging on my windows. And so if you're outside, hope you're keeping dry. And uh, can endure the weather as it speaks to us. Um, so glad you could join me for our time together. Went to therapy yesterday and, and made a few strides um, in my therapy and feeling a little bit better this morning. So I have a long way to go, unfortunately, uh, but hopefully we'll continue to make progress. So this morning I've chosen this scripture from Matthew 7 and I know that this scripture engenders a lot of conversation a lot of disagreement a lot of a lot of things because of where we are in our lives and in our world but i want to share it with you and i want to talk about some circumstances that we find ourselves in and how this applies to us now i said that i was going to only do verse five but i feel like i'm going to do verses one through five um, just as it talks to us so the scripture says this from Matthew chapter 7. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with judgment you make for with the judgment you make you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, "Let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye?" You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, this entire verse, we hear lots of things that Jesus has to say um, about asking, you will ask, and it will give to you, seek, and you will find. There is the golden rule there. There is the scripture that helps talk to us about entering the narrow gate and what that means for us. Um, there talks about us being scripture we've done, building our house up on the rock and what all of that means for us. And so here we are, though, in this text that I think is important for us. And there are a couple of things, you know, that have happened along the way. That I want to share with you. So the other night, um, if you saw the end of a, a college basketball game between two Big Ten teams, you saw an exchange through the um, handshaking line between coaches, and then you saw an altercation. And you saw one of the coaches, unfortunately, reach out and smack the other coach on the head. And so there's been lots of conversation about that. One of the conversations specifically about that is that we should just stop the handshake line after basketball games. And I think that's a ridiculous thing for us to do. And so there's but there's been but there's been lots of conversation about well, he said something first, the Wisconsin coach said something first which made the Michigan coach lash out. The Wisconsin coach put his hands in so then he could do anything he wanted. And there's been lots and lots of, of conversation about making this seem right. Well, none of that is the way college coaches, or frankly, any coach, should ask, act, act, I should say. And frankly, it's not any way that we should act as people. You know, we, we're confronted all the times. So I suppose that we could say in our lives that there are many times we just want to lash out. You know, if we could just bash the other person on top of the head. That would make things all so much better. We get annoyed, I think, in life when we think that others get away with something. We want justice to be done. I know. And I know some of the reaction to this scripture and this whole idea about the speck in the neighbor's eye 
is that people will say to me, and they have, and they will, but Jim, you don't know the other person. You don't know the wrong that person has done. You don't know how bad they've been in life. You don't know. And so I get this, this vitriol about what all of that means. Here's the challenge for us. Maybe we don't know. Maybe I don't know. And maybe this really is too big of an expectation for us. Usually the problem is, the reason we can see the speck in, another, in the eye of another is because we have the same problem. The more a behavior annoys us, it seems to me, is the more that we have that very same behavior. Perhaps for us, we need to do a speck removal. Perhaps for us, we need to deal with our own issues in life and what that means for us. You know, this, this idea of taking the speck out of our own eye when we have a log, of our neighbor's eye when we have a log in our own eye, there's this interesting thing, you know, we, we struggle in our society right now with lots of things, lots of things where we don't see eye to eye, whether they're in the sports arena, mostly though, right, they're in the political arena. And we, we look at the other person, the other side of the aisle, uh, or our neighbors down the street, um, like they have this huge log in their eye. And if they would only take it out, the world would be a much better place. Here's the challenge for us, I think, as we live our lives. Don't judge so that you may not be judged. That's a hard thing for us to do. But the scripture says we have to first take the log out of our own eye, and then we'll see clearly to take the speck out of our neighbor's eye. And so I think this, as I said earlier, I think this, this causes me to cause us to look at ourselves first. When we are annoyed by the activity of others, we're annoyed by those who think differently than we do or act differently than we do. We have to ask ourselves, what, what fault is this showing me that I need to deal with in myself? Is there a slight that needs forgiving? That's a tough question, I know. But I think that's where God calls us and, and what God calls us to in this life that we're living together. You see, some people have said of the altercation at a basketball game, he only slapped him on the side of the head. There was no punch. There was a slap. Is there a difference? Did you, did you see the altercation? If you think that slapping him on the side of the head with an open hand is different than a punch with a closed hand, you ought to think about what you really think about life. Because it's the same. No head coach of any team, from the teeniest, tiniest of players to the most seasoned players, should ever, ever, ever do that. We want better for each other, right? And I think that's just true for us, you know? I just I just think about this, you know, unfortunately for me, um, I have a lot of time to think. And uh, there was a person who called our office last week while I was gone, and Betsy, unfortunately, was home with sick. She said all four of her kids were throwing up. And so when she got back to the office, she was returning phone calls. And she texted me early t Monday morning and said, Jim, I finally understand why you say sometimes that you get the life sucked out of you. She said, because I returned phone calls. Everyone was fine except one person 
who was so angry that they didn't get a phone call returned in a timely fashion. This person is talking to my office manager at St. Paul's Church. Really? Goodness. You see, I think we have to expect better. I expect better of you, and you should expect better of me. And so, friends, we should look deep inside ourselves. We should look in the mirror, if you will. We should reflect deeply on who we are and how we act and how we live. And whether it's on the sports field or political field or in our neighborhood or our places of business or, or whatever it is, we should take a look deep inside of ourselves and realize that we're all, you know, living on this on the same plane and God wants the same for us. We just have to to deal deeply and personally with ourselves. Looking within. Here's the point of this, and I want to leave you with this. So I think we have to look deep inside ourselves. What's this showing in me that I need to reflect upon? Because you see, looking within causes us to fall on the mercy of God. And thank goodness for us, God is merciful. Looking within causes us to fall on the mercy of God. Might we all look in and examine who we are and ask God to help us. Thanks for joining me today. Um, thanks for sharing your time with me. Uh, thanks for really helping me reflect on this and what it means for us. Thank you for um, always joining me. Enjoy the beauty of today. Although I look out, it's not horribly beautiful. But know of God's love and know of my love for all of you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.